Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to go to another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. So these guys are another relatively new addition to the Scottish beer scene. They were born off the back of another brewery who's been doing some very interesting and very good beers in recent times. And the main idea behind the guy founding this brewery was that he wanted to go back to being a little bit more kind of experimental if you like and I've heard very very good things about the beers from this brewery so nice that we can finally get around to reviewing one of them here on the channel I've been meaning to do it for quite a wee while actually so the beer that we've got to look at today I think sounds very interesting so hopefully it lives up to my expectations hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head up toward Dundee and we're going to have a look at my very first beer from Holy Goat Brewing. So this particular beer is called Unicorn Wizard. It comes in at 7.2% ABV and they're describing this one as a golden sour with white peaches. So uh, yeah, this should be pretty interesting. Uh, this beer was bought at Bottle Baron through in Edinburgh and yeah, they had a good selection of different uh, holy goat things there so yeah these beers are fairly easy to get across scotland these days i'm not sure how far afield they're getting so do let me know where you've been able to get a hold of these beers if you do end up watching this video i'll be very curious to see how far the holy goat beers have traveled so far but uh, yeah let's crack on with this one then and see how we get on a 7.2 percent golden sour with white peaches. I don't think I've ever had white peach before. So uh, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done or I will do, I should say, from Holy Goat Brewing in the future. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, usually very regularly when I'm at home in the motherland of Scotland and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Holy Goat Brewing for the first time. So Holy Goat Brewing as I've mentioned to you already are based in Dundee they brew their beers out of 71 Brewing and the company was founded back in 2021 by Johnny Horn, who was one of the co-founders of Vault City Brewing. So Johnny, from what I understand, is originally from Wales, and he started experimenting with fermentation when he was about 15. But later on, he moved up to Edinburgh to study a PhD in archaeology, but apparently he ended up reading more brewing textbooks than he did anything to do with archaeology. So he also ran the University Brewing Society, and he used to work at Brew Store, which is the the best known uh, biggest home brew store that you'll find through in Edinburgh but then he also got a job brewing part-time at the Hanging Bat in Edinburgh on Lothian Road which is known to be a very nice little brew pub so do check it out if you find yourself through in Edinburgh but he began to experiment with some different sour beers there I think he was brewing 50 litre batches at the time and that started back in about 2012 but during his time at the Hanging Bat he met Stephen Smith Hay who was also a home brewer and interested in setting up his own brewery and they were soon joined in this venture that they started by uh, his partner Adele Wilkie but initially they didn't think about making money so they set up what they called a glorified home brewing kit in uh, Stephen and Adele's kitchen and they began brewing together weekly back in 2018. Uh, over the following year they started to visit different beer festivals and get the, the name Vault City out there a little bit more and uh, yeah, they went on to do very well. They started brewing their beers at 71 Brewing up in Dundee and Vault City spent a total of 16 months there uh, but they were in the process of setting up their own brewery in Portobello near Edinburgh but Johnny enjoyed the 
his time in Dundee a lot and really wanted to get more kind of creative and he decided that he would do his own thing and he formed Holy Goat officially in 2021 and uh, Vault City went to uh, down to Portobello where they're still based today. The main thing from what I understand is that Vault City had a very strong kind of base beer and they were sort of experimenting on top of the base beer whereas... Um, Whereas Johnny kind of wanted to experiment a little bit more by brewing different beers and do like really kind of wacky and out there things. So he says that the new business model that he has allows him to go back to being very, very experimental with the start beer, if you like. But it also helps him kind of maintain profitability at the same time. But uh, they've been doing very well over the last little while. And as of March 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 25 different kinds of beer and from what I gather they have gone down very very well actually but um, yeah that is all I can really tell you about Holy Goat Brewing for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more mm -hmm. about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah this should be uh, quite an interesting one, but like I say, that's all I can tell you about the um, about the about these guys for the moment. So yeah, let's crack on and have a little bit of a look at this beer. Then I have to say, I picked this one. There was quite a few different ones from Holy Goat, but I just picked this one because I like the name. You know, Unicorn Wizard it sounds kind of power metal, if you like. But uh, yeah, just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. It is very, very nice. You can see plain black bottle cap on this one as always. But yeah, this is a 375 milliliter bottle. I believe this one cost me about £6.50, something like that. So that translates to roughly, what, about €8, Euros, 80 Swedish kroner, and I guess somewhere in the region of like $9, maybe $10 American, something like that, which isn't bad for a sour beer. But it says on the side of this one, this golden sour is fermented with a strain of Britannomyces isolated from a renowned Belgian Trappist brewery. I've got a feeling that could be Orval. I think Orval is the one that uses uh, Britannomyces in their beers. But this strain provides uh, intense stone fruit, peach, apricot characteristics when used for primary fermentation. And this fruit forward base beer was re-fermented on 200 grams per litre of Spanish white peaches. So, um, yeah, this should be pretty cool. But there you can see on the side of the uh, bottle there, there is the Holy Goat brewing symbol, which I think is pretty cool. It is very heavy metal, but if you see pictures of Johnny, he is, he's quite obviously uh, a big metal head, big long hair and the kind of beard and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, this should be very nice. The Unicorn Wizard, a golden sour at 7.2% ABV with lots of white peaches in it. Let's crack this guy open and see how we get on. I'm very, very curious about this. Just going to make sure it doesn't explode on me because sometimes the sour beers can do that. But I think, yeah, it's going to be okay. As you can see, a little bit of smoke when we open it up, but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm really very curious about this. Oh, and it's nice and hazy as well. This should be good. There we are. Yeah. Oh, I wonder, does this one have... Um, this one has barley, wheat and oats in it, actually, so that'll explain why it's nice and hazy and it smells lovely as well. I've just got a little whiff of it as we've opened it up there. So, um, yeah, anyway, as you can see with this one, it's actually poured quite similar to what you might expect of a New England IPA. But yeah, um, before the head disappears on this one then, you can see that it's poured with about a two-third finger of a frothy, I would say, kind of cream coloured head. That looks very, very nice. You can see it's got lovely, very small bubbles to it there if I bring it right up to the camera. But yeah, you can see the colour of this beer. It's got a lovely, very bright kind of yellow colour to it. It looks a little bit akin to like a mango or peach juice, I should say, which makes sense because there's peaches in the beer. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will also affect the colour of the beer. And when it comes to, you know, these kind of modern sour beers, that is going to play a role. You can quite clearly see the influence of the peaches and the colour of this beer. It has that lovely 
uh, kind of slightly murky yellow note to it. I think on the camera it's appearing a little bit brighter to you guys than it is to the na to the the naked eye. But to me, that's a very kind of we sign the natural light through it. It's a very kind of murky. Um, sort of mixed fruit juice type yellow. I always like comparing these beers to different fruit juices because that's just what they remind me of. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there, but overall it does look pretty nice. And that head has just faded away to be a kind of thin, uh, very sort of thin foamy layer. But uh, yeah, nice little bit of ring around the edge of the glass, but overall it does look very nice. So the level of haze that you can see in this one is Pretty impressive, but that will be down to the oat and wheat content in this beer. Beers are always naturally hazy, even just with barley malt and things like that, because the yeast does play a role in that as well. But yeah, this one is, you know, kind of New England IPA type hazy, that, and that will be due to the wheat and the oats. But overall, a very nice looking beer, this one. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect of it in that sense. I thought it might be a little bit more like, uh, you know, kind of clear and things like some of the... Um, you know some of the the Flanders Reds and stuff like that, but no, it does have a proper full-on New England level haze to it. This one, but yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the appearance of this beer. Let's move on to the aroma and just see how we go with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful smelling beer. I'm just going to say it straight away. This one is absolutely lovely. Yeah. Um, where do we start? Where do we start with this one then? Um, it's it's absolutely lovely. I mean, the thing with a lot of these sour beers, I find for me, it's sour beers are not the most complex of things when it comes to aroma and stuff like this. Um, I think it's very much uh, a lot of the times are very straight shooting, but if they're done well, the aromas pardon me, can just be absolutely beautiful. And this one is showing that in abundance once again. So um, yeah, aroma wise, this beer just goes together very, very nicely. Um, yeah, I really like, I do really like how this one goes about its business. I will say that straight away. Yeah, um, first impression of it is it's just got a lovely kind of very soft fruity character to it. And then it's just very kind of creamy underneath it's got a lovely kind of creamy bready backbone to it so let's just break that down for you then and describe it a wee bit more in depth so backbone of this beer um it's got this lovely kind of smooth oaky woody character to it it has a little bit you know you get that smooth uh i don't know if i wonder if it would be american oak actually i've always found american oak is a wee bit um more kind of smooth if you like than European oak is. European oak has a little bit more of a dry character to it but yeah to me this one's got a lovely very smooth European oak. I wouldn't be surprised though if this just going from the aroma I would not be surprised if it's like white wine barrel aged uh, come to think of it but yeah the aroma that you get of the in the backbone of this it's got that lovely very smooth oaky character to it you can smell just a little touch of what I suspect is like you know white green grape sort of thing so I wouldn't be surprised if this is white wine barrel aged, something like that. Um, but yeah, there's a good little bit of vanilla in this one as well. I'm getting quite a little bit of vanilla out of the kind of woody backbone that the beer has. But then on top of that, you can definitely smell like a little tiny touch of like bread crust or Jacob's cream cracker, absolutely. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of like soft white bread out of it too. So yeah, lovely big kind of soft white bready character in there. Um, there's a good little bit of kind of smooth oatiness too. So yeah, lovely big kind of smooth OT character. Um, yeah, and it also it also has a, a slight degree of sweetness. I do get a little tiny touch of that kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy thing out of it. Um, but yeah, you can smell. It does have a wee hint of that kind of petit filou uh, yogurt type thing. I always used to put these munch bunch yogurts in my lunchbox when I was wee. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of that kind of munch bunch petit filou type thing out of this one. So uh, yeah, the way that that goes together in this beer is very, very nice. I have to say the malty backbone of this is good. So you've got that lovely, smooth, oaky, woody sort of thing. Bit of vanilla in there. What, a bit of what I suspect is a kind of white wine, vinicy character. Jacob's cream cracker, bread crust on top. Lovely kind of white ready notes from the wheat. Um, and then you've got a bit of that oaty kind of smooth creaminess in there and a wee bit of kind of butter candy, butterscotch. The malty backbone in this beer is very, very nice. Um, this one, I, I don't know if this contains hops, but it certainly has a wee bit 
of um, it doesn't say it says it doesn't really contain hops but for me um, this one does actually have a little bit of a kind of green component to it I'm certainly getting some sort of hoppy characteristics um, so yeah for me I think this one it has a really nice um, it has a very very nice um, kind of um, just there's a little bit of that hoppy green component to it to this one I think there's a little touch of um, there is a to me there's a teeny little touch of earthiness a little bit of floral character and a good little bit of grassiness but it doesn't have hops listed it does not have hops listed on the ingredients here and it does say on the side I just noticed that all ingredients apart from the peaches were harvested within 33 miles of the brewery now I'm pretty sure there are no hop farms within 33 miles of um, of 71 Brewing in Dundee. So I, yeah, I think that's pretty safe to say there's not hops in it. But still, I get a little bit of this green kind of placebo uh, effect out of it. But that's pretty cool if they're using, you know, Scottish oats and Scottish wheat and barley malt and stuff like that. In this one, that is pretty damn awesome, actually. And I would be very curious to know whether it is Orval yeast in this, actually. But yeah, to me, as I say, I get a little bit of a kind of grassy um, placebo green component out of this one so I really like I do really like how that goes together actually so um, on the yeah on the the malt on the kind of malty uh, sorry on the fruity side of things I should say let's look at that so on the fruity side of things with this beer um, yeah on the fruity side of things with this beer you do certainly get um, for me it does have uh, a lovely kind of mix of fruits going on in this one. I get a little bit of kind of sultana out of it, like that dried white green grapey character. There's a wee bit of apricot in there for me. Um, maybe a little bit of a kind of like papaya type vibe as well. You've got a lovely soft, just soft background to this one. I would maybe even be tempted to say mango. But the peaches, I think, are the ones. They're giving you the real... The peaches kind of sit on top of everything. And as the adjunct fruit, you'd kind of expect that. It doesn't really have like a sort of tartness to the aroma. It's very, very soft and juicy in the way it goes about its business. Um, but yeah, I think this one, the fruity side of this beer is lovely. So like I say, you've got these sultanae, apricotae, papaya type notes underneath. Very A little bit of a smooth mango almost. Then the juicy kind of peachy character sits, um, sits on top of that. So yeah, I do like the way that this, uh, that this beer goes about its business in that sense. Um, yeah, for me, I think it works. I do think it really works uh, Works quite nicely, this one. The aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely, so it gets a massive, massive thumbs up from me in that particular regard. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of these beers before you get stuck into them. I think that's always, uh, I think that's always half the half the experience when it comes to craft beers and whiskies and sakes and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think this one is, uh, I think this one should be very nice. And like I say, curious to know whether it is Orval yeast that's been used in this. But uh, yeah, let's have a taste of it and see how we get on. So this is the Unicorn Wizard, a 7.2% um, golden sour with white peaches from Holy Goat Brewing based in Dundee here in Scotland. My very first beer from these guys. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Oh yeah. That is very, very nice. Yeah, um, kind of exactly what you'd expect. Um, first impression is lovely. Um, quite clean but still quite creamy sour beer actually but it is compared to the you know just for people that are kind of looking to compare this brewery to Vault City which you know inevitably you are going to do to a degree um, this one is quite different actually so um, yeah you will enjoy this beer if you enjoy the Vault City stuff but it makes enough of a it marks enough of a difference between the two breweries I have to say but that is lovely big big um Thumbs up to uh, to Johnny for this beer. This is great. Um, yeah, very nice. I have to say, very, very nice. Yeah. I'm going to say as well, this beer actually does have a lot more kind of tartness to it in the... Um, it does have a lot more tartness to it in the beginning. 
um, on the impact compared to what you might think it's going to have. But um, yeah, I, I certainly, I really like, I do really like how this one, um, this one goes about its business in that particular regard. So yeah, I think we can, uh, we can crack on with this one then. This is a very, very nice beer. Um, it's, yeah, it's got everything you'd want. A lovely, just saw, it's quite similar to the aroma besides the, uh, the impact that you get from it, actually. This is one of these beers where the flavour translates um, from the it translates from the aroma to the flavour quite well, I should say. Brain is not working today, guys. Forgive me. So, yeah. Um, for me, then, when you take this beer in, then, we'll talk about the impact flavour, because that doesn't seem to go away with this one. When you take this beer in, behind kind of around the edges of the tongue just behind the edges you can feel a little bit of a really sharp kind of you can feel that sort of sharp tart um how do you say you can feel that nice kind of sharp tart um peachy note coming out of this one so i, I really like that about this beer and um, it's got a little bit of a kind of stronger citricky note to it it's almost a little bit like a kind of white winey venice type thing so that's quite interesting as well but you'll feel that just come in behind the front part of your tongue and just the sides there and it just kind of smoothens out and rolls back a wee bit and gets a wee bit more kind of uh, juicy actually so um yeah the way that, that goes together i think is quite nice but you'll find that this beer after it has that impact flavor so yeah as i say you get this sharp peachy note and then it rolls out and it gives you this sort of white wine vinicy character and that does linger there on top of the other flavours into the aftertaste and fairness so just keep an eye on that particularly on the front of the palate but let's have a look at the flavours that we're getting out that we're getting out of some of the other parts of the beer so we'll go to the middle third of the palate then so the backbone of this part of the beer you get that lovely smooth oaky woody sort of thing there that just sits there um so toward the front of that middle third of your palate you can feel there is quite a wee bit of a kind of vanilla i do get a good little bit of a vanilla kind of sweetness coming out of this one so yeah nice smooth oaky woody character a little bit of vanilla in there and again yeah i think that um i think that does go together uh i think that does go together very very well um yeah that's interesting so on top of that i do get i still get a little layer of what i suspect is a kind of um white wine uh, Venice sort of thing you can just feel this little layer of like white wine kind of grapes Venice character but then on top of that you can feel there's a little bit of a bread crusty note to it you do get a little bit of that fresh um that fresh bread bread crusty sort of thing there's a little bit of a Jacob's cream crackery element but then on top of that you can feel a quite soft but quite um you know still quite dense white bready layer to it so that's interesting as well for me So yeah, I do like how that uh, comes out of this beer as well. So yeah, you've got that bread crusty and a crackery note on top of that. You've got a kind of more dense, white bready, wheaty layer to the beer. And um, yeah, I think it, um, I think it just gives you this really nice breadiness um, the further you go into it as well. But then on top of that, there's a wee bit of a more oaty, creamy, uh, you do get a little bit of that more kind of oaty, creamy um, aspect to it as well. And I think the oaty creaminess, the more that you kind of focus on that, you've got like a circle sitting on top of the bready kind of thing. So you have that lovely sort of circle there. Uh, and yeah, you can feel the kind of, you just get that lovely oaty creaminess there. But then right in the centre of it, you get a little bit of this kind of petit filou. Um, you get a little bit of this kind of petit filou, uh, yogurty type thing. Like I say, this beer to a degree, it reminds me of some of the munch bunch yogurts that my mum used to put in my lunchbox when I was younger. But then in the very dead centre of the palate, I think there's a wee touch of like a Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type vibe to this beer. So that's very interesting as well. I do like how that goes together. Um, yeah. This is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. 
On the, I think other than that, I don't think there's anything we really need to say about the middle. I don't think there's anything we really need to say about the middle third of your palette in this one. I think it, um, that covers everything. So let's look at the back third of the palette then quickly. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palette, you get a little bit of a bready build up in there, lovely kind of soft white bread and a wee bit of bread crust. Then the base, the base of the back third of the palette is a little bit more uh, kind of, there's a bit of a, you do get a bit more dryness out of the wood, you get that, yeah, a little bit of that kind of dry, woody character coming out of it. Um, on top of that, you get, you can feel that the the dry woody character's there, you do have a, a slightly thicker white bready component to it. It's a wee touch more kind of grainy, but it's a very soft, kind of still fluffy white bready character. And I suspect that will be a mix of the barley malt but also the wheat, you can feel the slightly thicker wheaty layer on top, but then you've got the yeastiness out of this one. And I find that the yeastiness, it's quite, it's it's not, it's a wee bit more kind of, uh, it does have a wee bit more of a kind of dense character to it. You get that big, thick, um, you do get a little bit of a thicker, more doughy, dense, bready character to it, uh, which I really like. But then you've also got a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty um, sort of thing too. So I like how that, um, I do like how that, um, kind of goes together as well but the, the yeasty layer doesn't feel too thick in that one in that sense but the you know Britannomyces I don't think ever really came across as being overly bready and things like that but yeah you do get a slightly thicker yeasty character I think sitting on top of the, the back third of the palate but definitely back third of the palate you can feel the flavour is taller you can see, feel the flavour is taller but then as you come further forward it just condenses down uh, a little bit more and squashes together so yeah the way that the um the way that this beer goes about its malty, yeasty, kind of woody side, if you like, is very nice. But let's focus on the fruity and other, the fruity and hoppy, I guess we can say, part of the beer as well. But like I say, I suspect this beer doesn't have hops. And that's a big debate among sour beer breweries. If you add hops into the beer, it can give it a little bit more depth. What a number of uh, sour beer breweries will do is add old hops into the beer so that it doesn't detract from the... Uh, the sour side of it, so bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, some breweries don't see the point in adding hops to uh, to sour beers because you can get so much flavour out of the yeast and the fruit and things like this. So that's a big debate anyway. Some breweries do it, like uh, I know Vault City do it, and but the, the breweries, the, the sour beer breweries I like in Sweden, you know, Fermenterna, Duck Pond, uh, Elma Living, these guys don't really do that. So that's worth thinking about. But uh, anyway, so the um, the green component of this beer then, as I say, I think there's a little bit of a green placebo there. I do get a teeny, teeny little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but as you come further forward, it is very, very smooth. There's not a lot going on. Tiny little bit of an almost floral, aromatic thing on the front corners of the palate and round the front curve of the palate, you do get a little bit of a slight grassy sort of thing. I would say there is more of a kind of green component to the uh, aroma than there is to the, uh, the flavour in this one. Definitely, would definitely say that. So, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I like how that, um, I do like how that goes about its business. Um, yeah, green, the green, that kind of green component is quite interesting. But let's focus on the front third of your palate and the more fruity aspects to the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there. It's got a kind of soft, quite bready character to it. The base of that front third of your palate is... You know, you do get a little bit of woodiness there, but I get a kind of oaty, kind of creamy vibe sitting underneath. And then on top of that, you get a little bit of a kind of oily, uh, fruity kind of character. Um, but yeah, the fruity side of this beer, I think, feels quite different. Because this beer doesn't have hops in it, I think it feels a little bit different. So yeah, as I say, you're getting, on top of the woody layer in this beer, you get that sort of white wine, vinicy, grapey sort of thing. But on the front third of your palate, for me, there's definitely a little bit of a kind of, you do get a little touch of sultana. Um, I get a wee bit of a kind of sultana you know, to it, a little bit of a kind of very light apricot papaya type vibe to it. And then on top of all of that, you've got the lovely kind of soft, juicy peaches. But like I say, you get quite a bit of tartness from the peaches when you first take the beer in. Um, so yeah, when you first take the beer in, you get a little bit more of a kind of peachy tartness out of this one which uh, I do quite like actually 
I like how that um, that kind of comes together. But then the peaches really just kind of soften up and juicing up the whole beer. So you get a little bit of a kind of wet on top of those softer, drier kind of fruit flavours I'm talking about on the front of the palate. You get a wetter, peachy character there. It has a bit of tartness to it and it just juices up. But then round the side of the palate, you can feel as you... What always happens is when you add fruit into the beer as an adjunct, you always get a little bit more of... Um, you always get a little bit more of a um how would you say you just you can you can feel that the fruity character just suppresses a little bit of the green component of the beer. It kind of pushes back against some of the the kind of bitterness that you would normally get from uh, from these beers. So that's always an interesting point to uh, to make about these ones. But you can feel that nice soft kind of slightly drier peachy flavour uh, there on top. Uh, it's a bit wetter and a bit more oily. Let's say time but round the edges of the palate you can feel the peach just going back and it gives you this lovely soft kind of dry character as well which I uh, very much like so yeah this is a lovely um, it really is a lovely beer this one and I very much enjoyed it so I wonder if the if white peaches are just a little bit softer and more kind of apricot like or mango like and things in their uh, in the flavour because that's what I'm finding with this one for me peach was always quite a sharp and quite pungent flavour but these white peaches seem to be a little bit more kind of soft and juicy in a way so yeah, that's a really interesting bit of uh, take-home knowledge for me that I've gained from this beer. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the flavour of this one. I really like this beer. Um, and as I say, I've heard good things about Holy Goat. So this one certainly lives up to what I was hoping I would get from these beers. But uh, yeah, on the uh, mouthfeel then to round off this review, for me, this beer it is kind of mid-bodied. I would say it's right in the middle of the spectrum. to get right in the middle of the spectrum. The, the carbonation has a little, I think this one has a wee bit of carbonation to it, a little bit of kind of crispness, but yeah, I think Britannomyces has the capability of giving you that. The beer overall feels quite wet and quite clean, but it does have a sort of creamy backbone to it. I think that's fair to say. In terms of IBUs, I think technically speaking, this one will be zero IBUs, but you're probably going to get like four or five out of it. Don't think there's much doubt about that. Uh, but yeah, the malt base, as we said, it's got a lovely kind of smoothness and dryness to it, a lot of creaminess and a little touch of sweetness. Then the fruity side of things, this beer has a wee bit of tartness that does kind of linger there into the aftertaste. Uh, but yeah, you've got a lovely, just big, soft, kind of dry, fruity character to it. I really, really like how this beer goes about its business. So it gets a big, big thumbs up from me. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that. This one was the Unicorn Wizard, a 7.2% golden sour with white, uh, with white peaches and Britannomyces yeast from Holy Goat Brewing in Dundee, my very first beer from these guys. And it certainly has impressed me. So there will be more, there will definitely be more reviews from Holy Goat Brewing over the next little while. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Holy Goat Brewing. And as I say, I will be getting more beers from these guys the next time I return to the motherland of Scotland. In the meantime though, check out my social media, check out Holy Goat Brewing social media, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Slanja, Skull, and cheers.